Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. Today, joined by a very special guest, Mr. Z. Farles, author of the NSA 14 Strategy Guide, author of the Madden 25 Strategy Guide, best-selling author. Z. Farles, how's it going? It's going pretty well. Do you say those nice things about everybody? Well, you wrote it down, so I figured I had the courtesy to at least read it properly. Did I say it right? I mean, everything sounded good? That is kind. Well, at least I can do is hosting the show here. Special guest. All right. That's very special. Today, we're going to talk about the guides and obviously the game. You've had a lot of time playing each game. Spent a little time about that. Obviously, E3, people are going to have a lot of videos to go through and look at. That might be a great way to get caught up. But I want to talk about, first, how did you and Gibbs get into writing these strategy guides? Back in college, we used to go to travel around to go to Madden tournaments, and we'd play the game uh, a good amount. You know, we, we used to play online, and then we started going to in-person tournaments. And it turned out one day we just made a YouTube video back before YouTube was really anything crazy. And we just put up our whole offensive scheme, and pretty much people responded to that. They really liked how we kind of laid out things and made it easy, uh, how, how it reflected real football and had some elements in it that c- could make people better pretty quickly if they followed a nice system. So we just continued to build upon that on uh, MadamBible.com. And then uh, after about three years, we were able to transition it into writing the uh, strategy guides for both NCAA football and Madden. So it's been a lot of fun, and it's definitely great to help people. When you go set about writing the guide, and last year was your first year, correct? Uh, we wrote NCAA 12 and 13. So last year was uh, our first style. In a, we changed up the format for for last year's guide, but mm-hmm. um, this will be our third uh, NCAA football guide. How do you determine what format you want to use, and really, how do you get a starting point when you're writing this book that is several hundred pages? Yeah, so you know it's over 200 pages, and the real key is to make sure you want to cover, uh, you know, definitely the top 25. That's something that we feel strongly about. Those are the teams that people are really going to play with, and. What we want to do is we don't want to forget about the beginner player. You know, sometimes we'll say things. We need to make sure that not only the expert people can understand it, but the people who want to become those experts can then take that information and then transition it. So the first year, what we wanted to do was just put down everything we knew about the game into the into the guide. And we did that, but it, it was so much text and information in football that it was hard to read because it was just so much information. You had to sit down and study it. So what, a, what we learned about a lot of people is they like to have it open when they play. So when they're playing, you know, they want to uh, take a look at it if they're losing and say, okay, well, what's the play I can actually use right now? Not, I don't need to learn about gap integrity right now because I'm kind of in the middle of something. So we kind of transitioned that format over by using the top five lists that we have in the guide to really make sure people can use it and, you know, and they actually want to read it, not just have to study it. There are some people who wonder, well, it's, it's a football game. If you know how to play football and you know the rules of football, how, how can a guide benefit you? But I, I'm sure you get a lot of questions from people who aren't real experienced. What are the kind of things for people who may be new to either franchise that you feel uh, that they want to see in a guide? And what do you kind of want to give them to get them caught up to speed for guys like us who have been playing football games for maybe 15 to 20 years? You know, I think the controls and just learning those are super important. Uh, this year in the guide, we're actually going to have like some frequently asked questions that we get from beginners and then from experts, like in, in that in that gray area in the middle. So, you know, setting your depth chart, what lineup should I use? You know, that's a question that we get all the time. How do I stop tight ends over the middle? That's a question we get all the time. And how you know how can I stop blitzers from coming in? And that's a question that we get all the time. So those type of things are things we really want to break down because they can take uh, a beginner player. And if you can learn a couple concepts around those questions, you can instantly get a lot, lot better, especially if you're into the online dynasty. And, you know, you're playing against other humans who tend to do similar things and things that are effective. But once you learn the controls, I mean, you're really at uh, an advantage if, if you know the buttons. Because then when, we, when you actually read a tip like that says try uh, dropping your defensive end into a hook zone to help out over the middle, they don't just freak out and say, uh, what? And then by the time the ball snapped, you're out of position. So once you know the buttons, you're at a huge advantage if you're a beginner. Uh, yourself and Gibbs are very, very good online players. You guys have been in tournaments and fared very, very well. Is it a challenge when you're writing this guide and you're getting some modes that you may not be the most familiar with, such as Dynasty, Ultimate Team, Connected Careers? Is that is that a challenge? No, that's not a challenge at all. And the reason that is because you know it's the official uh, we're the official partner of EA Sports, so we can actually get to go down to Orlando and spend time with the developers that make those modes and really get in depth, really learn you know how they made this mode, why they made it a certain way. Uh, if we have questions, we're we're talking to them, and they're really able to just answer us uh, and give us the information we need to make sure that you guys have all the tools you need uh, in those modes. So, you know, in Dynasty mode, you have all new coach skills this year. We probably spent three full days playing an online Dynasty down there, 
working up our coach skills, talking to them. Well, you know, does this one really matter? What, what do you guys think about that? Uh, do you think this one's too important or this one's, you know, so learning to rank those skills and find out which ones are the best as you progress in your career. Having the developers at, at answer questions, they're great and they really help, you know, share what they put in this mode and, and all the little things they hit around it, especially with the all new stuff. So, you know, we've already been down there checking out uh, all the new recruiting and everything. So having that ability is really great. Between NCA and Madden, how many times are you down there and how many hours would you say you are, are playing either game or even a total number? So it's just me and S. Gibbs on it, and I'd say between the two of us, we usually say that we play a 1,000 hours uh, before the game comes out. That sounds ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, last year we got in, between the two of us, just tons and tons of reps. You know, uh, I'd say we've probably been down at this point six separate times to, uh, for both the games. And when you're down there, I mean, he's never been to Disney World, and he's gone to Orlando 15, 20 times he's been to Orlando, never been to Disney World. Uh, never really been outside the hotel. People are always like, you're not tan when you come back. And the only tan I get down there is the radiation from the screen. Uh, and that we sit in front of, like, you get in there at 10. When we write the guy, we don't leave till 2 in the morning. So you're just there to play football. And so we get as, as many hours as we can in around all the multiple modes. And so it's a lot of fun, you know. When it comes down to crunch time, are you guys basically living down there? Pretty much, yeah. We, you know, we, we just, like you said, it's, you know, a couple hundred pages. And we take a lot of pride in really co- uncovering all the areas and making sure that, you know, the information in there is worthy of being the official uh, partner. So definitely a long, a long days, but uh, we, you know, you love it. So it makes it great. Let's do a couple cheap plugs here. If people are looking to get the guide, the NCAA 14 guide, you can get it for a little over $18 right on Amazon. It's 25% off. We have links at the gaming tailgate. If you go to Info Central, we have a link right near the top about the strategy guide. And I noticed that the Madden 25 guide, you can get a soft cover for 18 again, another 25 plus percent discount, and also a special hardcover edition. I definitely recommend what CDJ just said there, and going to, through the gaming tailgate to make sure that you pre-order that guide. Uh, you know, it helps them out, and it really is got to be something that if you're somebody who researches this stuff all around the season, uh, you're going to be. This is for you. You know, you're actually going to get a uh, card with the guide, so you're going to get an 85 overall Mark Ingram, and you're, then you're going to get another pack to help start your team. So if you're into Ultimate Team, it's a huge value. Plus, I broke the, I beat every skills trainer uh, and got all gold. So you'll have that, and you actually earn Ultimate Team cards for that. So you have tips on getting all those. So if you're one of those guys, you're going to have day one a pretty solid team at your fingertips. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, just uh, I think it's a great value, and you're actually going to get some e-guide access when you uh, buy the guide, so you'll have some help uh, with online videos from us. Let's talk about some of the gameplay stuff now. NC Football this year, one of the big real gameplay additions is the Infinity Engine 2. Uh, you last year, you saw the first version on Madden. NC last year did not have it. This year, they're getting IE2. Talk about when it kind of kicked in, when you were playing it, when you really started to see and feel the difference. I mean, the big key to the Infinity Engine is running the ball. And, and gamers that got lazy habits, this is how I describe it. So if you were a little bit lazy and you played NCAA football 13 last year and, you know, you continue just to play like you played in years past and then you went to Madden, you'd, you'd start to maybe run some draws and say, oh, there's a lineman in front of me. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to run into him anyways. You'd fall down. And you just kind of got you out of some of those habits that you were into. So having it now in NCAA football 14, and I know a lot of the, the guys that are really hardcore NCAA in your site are – might say, well, you know, we're only getting what Madden got last year. Absolutely not true. You know, there's a lot of new additions to it that make it, there's just, it's so much more potent. I, it's hard to explain, but you see a lot more moments where you're like, whoa, like I never saw that in Madden last year. Plus, it's just a lot cleaner, a lot smoother, a lot less falling over. Uh, the physics look much better. And it was really actually nice that they kind of ironed it out in Madden last year. I, I personally enjoyed it in Madden last year, but I think in NCAA Football 14, people that played Madden last year are going to be like, okay, this is a step up. And would you agree or disagree with this? I felt like even in early March, I could see that it was so cleaned up that one of the drawbacks to the Madden 13 Infinity Engine was that there were so many goofy things post-play that it, in some regards it took away from the engine, whereas in March, in NC14, that was so cleaned up, at times I forgot it was in there. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but like you said, it just felt smooth and just kind of just a game of football. Right. And if you're a guy who's in the presentation, you know, sometimes in Madden last year you'd see some of those pile-ups that people called them. And you, and you might get some guys stumbling over after the play. So that can take you out of that. And I feel that if you're, if you're into that presentation. Plus, with NCAA being so realistic uh, with their presentation, with their wipes and cuts in the ESPN. Like, when I watch uh, ESPN now, and I watch a college football game on Sunday, or Saturday, excuse me, to me, 
ESPN is using what's in NCAA football. It's not NCAA football using what's on ESPN because I play a lot more NCAA football than I watch college football. Mm-hmm. Uh, so seeing that NCAA football is so realistic to me, the, the presentation and the cuts and everything. So definitely cleaning up uh, some of the post-play stuff is really going to, I feel like, take it to the next level. Uh because of, of how, like, sacred almost some of those cutscenes are. The option game is so important in college football. Almost every program runs something that has some kind of option in it. Uh, can you talk about your experience playing with the, the numerous changes in NCAA 14 and also any, any tips that you may have for people? Absolutely. I mean, we always love the option. I remember back NCAA 03, 04, I used to use Nebraska. I'd run the option cr- crazy. And uh, my favorite type of team and then they obviously changed their style, kind of devastated me. But, you know, we've always tried the last few years to create an option style, spread option style game with Oregon, and it's never really been as successful as they do it on Saturday. So with the commitment that the team, though, has made to fix up the option game, they've actually put in a, a brand new spread option playbook, and it's actually one of the most effective. So that's, that's our, our key is we, we're only going to give you plays that work. We don't, give you, we don't want to give you plays that are just cool, but they don't work that well. So S. Gibbs actually built a scheme in the guy that's about 12 to 15 pages of just a spread option playbook, teaching you all the different ways to run it, the best place to use. And uh, if you pre-order the guide, if you send us a tweet or uh, email us either at Man and Bible, at sgib 7 or zfarls at mantips.com, we'll actually send you a video to go along with the printed part of the guide to actually show you how to run those plays. So uh, we do believe in it this year. It's much improved. The pitch relationship's a lot better. There's, you know, all the small things they did to really change it up. You get a lot out of the backfield a lot uh, faster, and it's just a, bit, a much more effective way to play this game this year. So it's really exciting, and it makes it a lot more fun, too. This year with uh, some of the new development members, Clint Oldenburg being one, the offensive line has received a lot of work and focus. Can you talk about some of the things you've seen and, and how that will help users open up their offense in NCAA 14? Yeah, the running game's much better. I thought NCAA actually had a pretty good running game last year because – yeah, I had played some of the Madden, and, and the physics, it was a little bit tough to run up the middle. You had to go outside, but I felt like in NCAA last year, you could take it up the middle. But this year, you can really take it up the middle and follow your blockers. You know, the key to really to, to running well in this year's game, in my opinion, is to go slow to the hole and then burst through it. So you don't want to be at your top speed. You have a lot more control over your runner this year. Uh, all, all the new moves are, are much better, much more realistic. The, the planting, it looks really, really good, uh, and the hard cuts you can make with your running back. So if you you're going to see a lot of different types of blocks, and, you know, I felt a little bit like sometimes you'd see blocks and you say, okay, my guy's going to win that block or he's going to lose that block. Now, uh, a one block or a lost block isn't a good thing or a bad thing. It's, do I need to cut back here? I can run a little bit of a zone running game because I, HB stretch, I'm going to get that double team. I'm going to be able to cut back. I'm going to be able to go outside. I need to read that, and it makes you more active participant in the run game, and now you have a lot more things available to actually run that ball. We've heard a lot about the offense, obviously, with the Infinity Engine and these option improvements. EA is focused on the, the offense side of the ball because, frankly, that's what sells copies. That's what excites people. But the longtime members of the community and of the NCAA football franchise, defensively, we've heard about a few things being added. Can you talk about what, what things are in the game to help counter some of these improvements and just what's new on defense? Right. So, you know, people are always nervous about stopping the option, stopping the, the ground game. We've got that covered in the guide. We teach you how to actually defend the option, what to do, who to target. To me, for beginners, it's a lot easier to tackle this year. You have actually the heat seeker, and that's going to help you be able to steer while lining up for the tackle so your guys can actually break down. It's going to look looks a lot better, and it also makes it easier to play defense. And, you know, I already mentioned earlier making adjustments so important before the snap, but, but during the snap a lot of times guys would get actually in position. They might make a good read, but they'd whiff the tackle. Now I think you're going to see a lot better uh, tackling by the user who, who are beginner players. You, you know, the elite players are still going to be able to separate themselves by using hit stick, but it's going to be easier for beginner players to get that tackling down and not be afraid to make plays, I guess, is how I would put it. You know, A lot of the times guys are afraid to click on and try and go for interception, afraid uh, to click on and go for a swat or, or make that they're going to make a bad play and then cause their team damage. When realistically, if you click on, you're going to have a better chance to make the play. So they've done a lot of things that will actually encourage people to click on, make plays, and should make playing defense not just easier but more fun and uh, you're actually more of an active tar- participant. Stop playing as defensive lineman, guys. I feel like you're talking to me because that's what I do. Now I feel a little ashamed that I should apologize. It's, it, uh, you know, it's, I, I, just, I see people rock the D lineman and think you can just be so much more versatile. If you, you know, the, the biggest tip we, one of the biggest tips we always have is play as a middle linebacker who's using the, ha- the halfback. If the halfback goes out, follow him. 
you know, have defensive assists that will help you actually track them. And if the uh, now you can roam free and kind of work that middle of the field, shut some stuff down. And if you're just a uh, middle linebacker on hook zone, I mean, what's the the worst thing you can do, really? I mean, you can't give up a bomb touchdown if you're like you're if you're cover three and playing that middle safety and, and trying to get in on the run game. You're not going to get fooled. You're not going to cause your team too much harm. And I think once you get a little bit of confidence like that and you make a few plays, it's more fun. I mean, playing as D lineman is good, but I recommend going to somebody in the back seven. That makes a lot of sense, and I, I know a lot of the more skilled players always say they play as either a free safety or middle linebacker. Uh, but as someone who plays as a D lineman, I'll tell you why I do it. And it's, I know for a lot of people, it's they're just pretty screwing things up on on the back end, which is understandable. For me personally, I I think it's a little more rewarding to get in there and try to disrupt plays, especially pass plays if you can get that defensive tackle to get in the backfield. But that's not always the easiest to do. Do you recommend that people try to do that if they play as a D-tackle, or should they just bring pressure if they want to disrupt a play? Yeah, we have some blitzes in the guide that are uh, pretty easy to set up, and you'll see that we have recommended blitzes uh, for each of the teams in there. So to get pressure in the game, it's a good idea to, to send somebody and try and get somebody free. So if we can send, if we need to send six because they're blocking a halfback and get one guy in, okay. Uh, so we're always trying to isolate a line and, and get, hopefully get somebody in free. That way... The quarterback's either got to roll away from that, or you make your opponent slide the lines. Just make your opponent do something. You know, if they slide the line against one of our blitzes, they can pick it up. But we try and set up our blitzes that look the same, like it could be coming for the left or the right. So then they don't want to slide. So it's it's all a chess match, and it's all that stuff that mirrors you know the football chess uh, coaching decisions you see on a Saturday. And we just try and get them in the game. So always trying to get a guy free is important. Not a bad idea though to, to rely on a, on a four man rush though. Sometimes you know, last year I felt like in that and the, the four man pressure if you just kind of let them rush, could be actually pretty successful uh, in the way that the ends contain the quarterback. But in third and 20, gas them up. Gas them up, bring bring two blitzers, force them to keep guys in or dump it off. What would you say gameplay-wise uh, was they, were there the biggest area of adjustment from 13 to 14? What really took you some time as you're writing the guide and even just playing the game as, as a fan? What took you some time to get acclimated and accustomed to? I'd say that one of the biggest changes is definitely the running moves that you can do. Uh, it's just learning to be patient. Like I said, you get into some sloppy habits, and when you play the new game, you start to see more realistic things, and you got to kind of take time and adjust to it. And then once you get used to it, you go back and play the old game, and you're like, how did I play this old game this way? Uh, so it's always a step forward and a step in the right direction. Personally, I like some of the changes on the, de- on the defensive side of the ball. I think it's a lot easier to control some of your defenders. NCAA has always had like the delay, kind of... The interception, the camera doesn't turn around right away. I like to see that online, you know, especially it doesn't quite give it away, doesn't stall the play out. It kind of keeps the action flowing. Overall, though, I do feel like you have great control of your defender this year in NCAA, uh, better than you had last year. And I think it's going to obviously lead to more plays, lead to uh, more fun, more rewarding feeling when you actually do get that win. Zone coverage in the game this year, do you think it's uh, improved compared to it was in 13? So all, uh, last season, I played heavy, heavy two-man under coverage. I felt like it was the best uh, coverage in the game last year. I did, played a little bit of zone in Madden. Uh, I had some plays that were cover three. And I didn't feel like I was at too much of a disadvantage. I was under pretty good pressure. I did give feedback to the team about uh, buzz zones, purple zones. And I know that was something that was talked about on our forums. When we head down to these events, we always say, hey, here's what our community is talking about. And I know you, Chris, you go down there, you represent the game of tailgate and you give feedback. So that was something that we wanted to uh, have them address, and uh, you guys will have to check out my E3 videos, and I'll show you. When you were going into Dynasty Mode and writing the guide about the new recruiting system, uh, this is the question on our last podcast I I posed to Jeremy and Tommy, and I'm going to give the same question to you. Do you think this new system with the the point-based system, that it could be a little daunting for new users at first, not necessarily the way it's designed, but just in terms of, I feel it's a little bit imposing because of how many numbers there are in everything throughout recruiting. Uh, do you think new users will will uh, jump to it? And a lot of secondary question, uh, what does the guide have in it that might help people get used to this new system? So we go everything you need to run through a full season of Dynasty and, and all the tips on recruiting, the types of recruiting battles you're going to see, uh, whether or not you have a player that you don't think you can get to, should you go after them, what, you know, what are the point totals, do you have a player that's yours if you want them? How many points should you go with? Uh, are you playing online? Are you playing offline? So we have a ton about recruiting. I personally think the point system is easier uh, than last year's system. I just feel like you get this pool of points. You know what your 
in for, and you know who you can end it on. You, you can see everything laid out all in one screen. You can flip through with uh, LB, RB, or L1, R1 to kind of go through those panels and see, okay, I can scout him here. I can uh, give him points here. I can see my bonuses here. I can see my lead here. There's just so much to recruiting, but it's all in one area. And the point system to me makes it clear. I love that you can kind of do some math and figure out, okay, this is what I'm getting here. I can actually change some of those grades. To me, I consider myself not a novice dynasty player, but definitely more uh, like, but not extreme, like some of you guys that gave me Dale Gator. Uh, and to me, it's the perfect system. I was able to land plenty of good recruits. So I just felt like I was more involved in it. I felt like there was more metagame, more. Uh, I know Gibbs is coming after this recruit this week. He's going full points. I got this much of a lead. I got this much of a bonus advantage, but I'm still going to have to go here. It's going to hurt me uh, on some of my other recruits, but I need to do it this week. It just made it a lot faster. Also, anytime you can make something more in-depth, but also speed it up and then make it clear, it's much better for me. Did you guys get to play much NCAA football ultimate team in your time down there? So we did get some on some NCAA football ultimate team. Uh, the key for us just learning, you know, what is the, what are the ultimate team and then what cards are going to be available. Um, you know, we actually had a lot of help from the development team to get great Madden Ultimate Team information or NCAA football ultimate team information into the guide. So not just you're not just getting the packs from us and the Mark Ingram card, but you're actually gonna get tips from the developers on how to build your team, tips on getting coins, uh, tips on the best collections, uh, the best players, and actually some uh, pretty cool Heisman and stuff uh, in Ultimate Team. So definitely something uh, to check out as part of the guide. Very very good. As someone who may not have played much Ultimate Ultimate Team before. Can you talk about the appeal as it, as you guys were playing it and, and working on it for the guide? Um, what stood out to you? Like, holy cow, this is this is pretty neat. This is pretty fun. I mean, college people are so much more attached to their universities than they are sometimes with their pro teams, and there's more, a lot more variety. You know, every NFL player went to college somewhere, so all these guys have these histories, and then you see players like I'm trying to think of a good example, like maybe. David Terrell from Michigan. Uh, you know, he's a legend at Michigan. He was incredible. Peter Warwick at Florida State. Some guys that, you know, got drafted pretty high. Didn't have the pro careers that you might have had, but, and Taylor Jacobs for the Redskins. You know, he was a legend at Florida. But these guys, you know, you're going to find some of these guys in Ultimate Team that are those campus legends who you want to play with, you want to build your team around. If you went to Michigan, maybe you want to create an all Michigan team. If you went to uh, Ohio State, maybe you want to create an all-Ohio all State team. It, it all is really up to you, and it depends on what type of ultimate team player do you want to be. Do you want to be somebody who's going to play ultimate team competitively, and you don't get an Ohio State player share in the same backfield? You have a Desmond Howard card uh, getting handed off to uh, by an Ohio State quarterback. Like, Are you okay with that Or because you want to win? Or do you actually just kind of like collecting cards I mean, a lot of people just play Ultimate Team and they don't even actually play much more than a few solo challenges to grab some coins. They just and and stay up on it. Some people, and that's what's cool about it, is you can kind of do whatever you want, you know. Um, I've seen one of our guys have, he has an all Raiders team for Madden. You know, he's got only players from the Raiders and he calls it his team the Autumn Wind. And he's got a pretty good team, but, you know, if you're a guy who's got a Barry Sanders card, and uh, an autogram three-star quarterback card, like you're going to crush him probably. But that's that's his experience and how he wants to play his ultimate team, and that's what's cool. It's cool to build really anything you want. One of the gameplay differences between Madden and NCA is that Madden has this run-free modifier. Uh, for the Madden fans who may be listening, can you talk about what this is and how it how it really helps gameplay? Yeah, so the run-free, uh, the precision moves in Madden are actually used with the L trigger. If you have a player with a 90 plus uh, rating in a certain category, you could pull off, you know, just they're like a little bit of an advanced move. So a hurdle with a regular player looks a certain way, and then a hurdle with a player when you're using the precision modifier, fire looks a little bit different. And you can use that with guys with a 90 plus jump rating, say. If you have a juke, you'd have a precision juke. And they're just a little bit more flashy, a little bit more effective, a lot of fun. You can still actually, so you have combo moves in NCAA football which means you can move, like, you can do a back juke into a spin. You could do a spin to a truck, uh, all, you know, staying on the right stick and kind of free-flowing like FIFA. But uh, in Madden, so the only real difference is you could just use a precision move and then combo that precision move. So it just, it just looks a little different, you know, obviously uh, maybe a little more effective since these are super elite guys doing these moves, but 
other than a stylistic thing, don't feel like, don't feel too bad about it. It's really, really, it's just fun. I mean, I already commented how excited I am just for the running game in general, between the option and then between uh, being able to feel like you're more in control. You're definitely more in control in NCAA football with the plant, with the, you know, the hard cuts with the left stick. I just find myself using the left stick a lot. Uh, it, it just, and then I go into replay and just kind of watch myself uh, stick, stick that leg in the ground. So it has a similar thing in it. It's a lot of fun uh, to do either type of running. NCAA football is completed, and we're really excited with the product that we have for you guys. Uh, I really think the e-guide access is something that's going to help add a whole new level for the beginner type of player. Uh, and that comes free, obviously, when you buy just a print guide. So definitely check out the Game of Tailgate Amazon link, and I think uh, you're going to love it this year. So when you finish up these guides, what do you guys do? Oh, so when the game launches, we actually uh, ramp up to provide in t- uh, tips during the season. So we'll track our community. We'll track what are the hottest plays. What are people doing? Uh, we do a weekly show every Wednesday at 8 o'clock called This Week in Madden, and we'll just answer your questions. Uh, we take live callers. We play live games on the air. Uh, me and Gibbs battle back and forth about stupid stuff, whether or not this player's precision move is better than this player's uh, combo move. What's better? All that jazz. So we pretty much run all the way through the Super Bowl, just keeping both games up to date and uh, providing you guys with videos on YouTube. Uh, we do some giveaways and everything like that. Go ahead to MaddenTips.com. We actually have a, a giveaway coming up soon for Madden. If you sign up for the email list, you actually can win the anniversary edition of Madden, which comes with the DirecTV. You can win a winner's kit, and you can win a $100 NFL Shop gift card. So that's a whole package just for you know signing up for free. And, uh, you can, and then we'll be putting our videos up when NCA comes out on that. It's a little bit more, you know, sometimes it's nice to see some of the print stuff in uh, video format, too. So do you guys ever get a break? Or is it always play, 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 guide, guide, guide? Pretty much play, 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 guide, 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 and then just play, 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 play article. Play, <laughs> play, play, TV show, or, or show. Play, 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 video. Play, 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 uh, tournament, play. Uh, play, play, get yelled at for playing too much by uh, the ladies. Uh, take them to dinner, play, 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 article, Twitter, Facebook, play. Uh, so we go, and like I said, so we go all the way through the Super Bowl, and then there is a small period off from like after the Super Bowl till April, but at that whole time, you got the combine, you got the draft, mm-hmm. you have uh, news about the new game, so we're always trying to figure out, okay, they just released. Uh, you know, they just released the playbooks. They don't say what it is, but something called run free. So that must mean that this is going to happen. And we got to go down and start playing. So it's no, nobody out there feel ba- feels bad for me. They're like, oh, man, this guy doesn't get a break. All he does is play video games. Uh, <laughs> and I, I don't complain. I love it. So not too much of a break, but you got to stay up to date. Are there any teams or players in either NCAA and or Madden that you really are going to think – you're going to use a lot this year in 14 and Madden 25. They, is there a certain playbook in NCAA, a certain team, and also the same for Madden? So definitely. So for NCAA football, we talked a little bit about the spread option playbook. And so for that guide, when you're actually reading it, you're going to get a top five recommended teams to use with the spread option playbook. You're going to get uh, all the formations we use. And so that's one thing that we're looking forward to in NCAA football. I've also broken down in NCAA football the top five different teams, if you kind of like to use a non-powerhouse team top five passing teams, uh, top five running teams, top five overall teams, top five defensive teams. So we've gone through and played with so many different types of teams. You know, Gibbs did a great job covering the top 25, so we have all that. Uh, we've provided some plays even for all 126 teams in the game. So that's uh, one of the first times that's happened. Um, so we've gone through and really play true. You know, that's, that's what they say. You can feel the difference in some of the guys uh, in the game, and we've covered those teams, and you'll definitely be ready to, to go with them. For Madden purposes, defensively, you can really feel what a Patrick Willis brings to your defense. Uh, he owns that middle, and he makes people scared to come across it. But I think Calvin Johnson is always a guy, and then I'd say for run free, Adrian Peterson. He's the Ferrari. You know, We always got away with playing with a Ricky Bush. He's never had a halfback, but they were still a pretty good team. You know, never had like a top 90, 95 plus rated halfback. I've gone and pl- I played with Adrian Peterson, and it's some of the most fun I've ever had. So make sure you take really see how they feel in the game this year because elite players feel like elite players uh, in this game, in, the, in both the games. And to wrap up our discussion on the NCAA 14 strategy guide, we mixed in a little Madden 25 strategy guide talk for those of you out there who might pick up both titles like I will be. Z Farrells, thanks for coming on. You guys put in a 
a ton of work with these guys, and I think it goes a little under the radar. It may not be as appreciated as much as it should by the community. Uh, it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, I'm a guy who, and not to be mean, I don't necessarily need the guys, but the last two years I certainly have read through and I've certainly used some of the things you've mentioned, so I would recommend to people, you know, you might think, oh, I don't need a guide. You can always read and look through what somebody else is doing to get a leg up. Absolutely. You know, you've got to be ready to play on day one. We've gone through and done all the work, so you don't have to. Uh, I think whether or not you're a beginner, there's a lot in there for you, and then there's also a lot, like we said, for that for that expert-type player who wants to check out that spread option book. Either way, if you buy it, let me know with a tweet, uh, at MattaBible, at SGIB7, or with an email, zfarls at madtips.com. Just send us a picture of you holding the guide or something like that, and we'll send you uh, uh, the, the link to the spread option video as a thank you. Uh, to the guys at the Game of Tailgate for having us on and, and helping us uh, get this guide out to as many fans as possible. If you love the game, you're going to love the guide, and that's why we're all here on this website, right? That's right, and you mentioned how they can get a hold of you on social sites. What websites can they go to for more information? Just check out MaddenTips.com and uh, you know support the Game of Tailgate and check out their Amazon link to the guide. That'd be awesome. Yep, and we'll have that. We have a story on the front page, and if it's not there by the time people hear this, go to the Info Central tab, and of course the top you'll see under the pre-order bonuses and deals, we have a link to Amazon. It's over 25% off right now. You can't beat that. So Z Farls, once again, thanks for coming on. For Z Farls and the Silent S Gibbs, this is Chris. Everyone, thanks for listening to this edition of the Game Podcast.